Well, hello, Minecraft fans. You know, one of the things that I like best about Minecraft is the technical side. In this game, people build all kinds of fascinating machines. And, you know, I'd really like to be able to invent some of these things myself. Now, to do that, I've been watching loads and loads of YouTube videos and reading lots of wiki pages, and I've been learning. Um, but there are a few concepts that have kind of stymied me uh, since the beginning. And so I've had to tinker and experiment and reread wiki pages and reread and rewatch, you know. And I thought maybe what I'd like to do today is share with you some of the things that I've learned. Now, so this video is my attempt at a fairly basic tutorial on redstone mechanics, where I put some emphasis on the basics that had confused me in the past. So I am hoping that in conjunction with all the other resources out there, maybe my video will be helpful to anyone else who is also just getting started. Now, one of the things that I think that needs to be understood first about Minecraft redstone mechanics is the role of a block. Now, with regard to redstone, there are two main kinds of blocks that you need to be concerned with. There are opaque blocks and there are transparent blocks. Now, you can Google for complete lists of these things, but here are a few examples, including cobblestone and wood slabs and wool for opaque blocks. And for transparent blocks, we have things like slabs and glass, and stairs and glowstone. One of the fundamentals of redstone mechanics is that opaque blocks can be powered. And when you do that, you can make their neighbors perform actions such as making an arrow shoot out of this dispenser. And you can transmit power to other places. Now, a block being powered is simply a block state, and it doesn't necessarily mean any action is being performed. In this game, there are a number of Minecraft blocks, some opaque, some transparent, that can be activated, such as this piston extending and this dropper. And we can also block a hopper from allowing items to flow down through it. In redstone circuits, there are four fundamental block states that we're going to be dealing with, and I have them up on signs here. The first state is when really nothing's going on. The block is neither powered nor is it activated. For lack of a better term, I tend to call them passive, or maybe inert would be a good term too. The next state that we can have a block in is called activated. And this is when it's performing some kind of action. But that doesn't necessarily mean the block is being powered. A block can be activated when it's powered directly, or it can be activated when its neighbor is being powered. There are also blocks like pistons, for instance, that are transparent blocks, so they actually can't be powered, but they can be activated. Next, we have weakly powered blocks. A weakly powered block can activate a neighboring block. And if it's a kind of block that can perform some action, then it will also be activated when it's powered. And a dropper would be an example of, of such a block. And then finally, we have strongly powered blocks. Now, like a weakly powered block, it can activate its neighbors. And if it also has an activation state, then it will also be activated when it's powered. The main difference between strongly and weakly powered blocks is that a strongly powered block will power redstone dust next to it, while a weakly powered block will not. And so as we go along, I'm going to break all of these things down for you with examples. Now, as an aside, there's a concept that is somewhat orthogonal to the idea of being strongly or weakly powered. And this is the concept of a power level, which you might think of as being analogous to a voltage level, perhaps. Now, strong versus weak powering decides whether or not a signal can conduct to a neighboring redstone wire from a block that is powered. Ortho orthogonal to that, is the power level, which pertains to how intense the signal is. Now, I'm not going to be dealing with that um, very much in this video. I think I'll reserve that for another time. Throughout this tutorial, and for your own testing and debugging purposes, I'm going to show you how to distinguish the states that I just talked about, those being activated, weakly powered, and strongly powered. So to begin with, uh, when I want to test to see if a block at some particular location uh, could be activated, I like to put down a redstone lamp. And also a piston is a good thing to try. So here in this example, we've got a block with a switch on it. And when I flip it on, the redstone lamp is going to turn on and the piston is also activated. Now, keep in mind that 
Just because this block is powered doesn't mean these are. In fact, they're not powered, they're simply in the activated state. If I want to find out if a block is strongly powered, then I'm going to put some redstone dust next to it. So as far as regular blocks go, only strongly powered blocks can power neighboring redstone dust. So next to this block with a switch on it, we have some redstone dust. And when I flip the switch, it lights up. And then, of course, it can be used to conduct a signal to some other place. If a block fails the strongly powered test, I can find out if it's weakly powered by placing the input end of a repeater against it. So here we're going to weakly power this block through some redstone dust. When I flip this switch, the redstone dust over here does not light up. But if a block is powered, either strongly or weakly, then a redstone repeater, whose input end is against the block, will light up. 